My name is uh, Father Kurt Young. I am the Vice Rector of Notre Dame Seminary and the Coordinator for the Propedeutic Stage here at Notre Dame Seminary. So the, uh, the Propedeutic Stage of Formation uh, really was called for by uh, the Holy Father and the Congregation of Bishops. Uh, they put out a document known as the Ratio Fundamentalis, which comes from Rome, essentially, and gets promulgated to all the bishops throughout the world. And then the bishops take that document and put it together mandates and norms for their individual country, for their uh, conference, right? So the Ratio, the new Ratio that came out, I think it was in 2018, maybe, um, called for this change in language, as well as um, an additional stage of formation prior to entering into uh, academic formation, which is the propedeutic stage. And so the USCCB has put out the program of priestly formation, the sixth edition, uh, updating our norms uh, with the language from the Ratio uh, in order to be in communion and, and integrate what the Holy Father wants to see for seminary formation moving forward. Um, I think it's really a great program uh, overall. Uh, the propedeutic stage is meant to help new seminarians really enter into this period of discernment in discerning God's call. What, what we were seeing, what bishops were seeing, vocation directors, uh, and the Holy Father, is that when we enter seminary and go right into an academic program, it's easy to focus on the academic program and to kind of downplay, if you will, uh, the spiritual, the human, and the pastoral dimensions. The intellectual dimension really kind of comes to the forefront because that's the most pressing. I have to write papers. I have to read all these pages. I have to do this project. Um, and so because of that, they were noting that the academic progress of an individual seminarian was really kind of driving the train uh, when it came to his moving on in formation. And so to, to get kind of pull back from that, and to look at it in terms of not so much the academics. You know, if a guy is gifted intellectually, that's great. But, you know, that's not the only aspect of formation. Um, so to pull back from that mentality, uh, they've called for this change in language. Rather than referring to pre-theology and theology, uh, we're now referring to them as discipleship stage and configuration stage, as well as the vocation synthesis stage, where formation, in terms of all four dimensions, really drives the train in terms of their moving on and progressing to the next stage of formation. And prior to that, the foundation for it all is this propedeutic stage. That is, a, that is a new stage that can be anywhere from one year, it's at least a 12 month program, all the way up to I think two or even three years if a guy really needs more intentional formation. It's meant to not focus on the academic or the intellectual side of things, but to focus really on the human dimension and the spiritual dimension. To really, as I like to say, it's meant to help a guy grow in his love for God and himself. The Sacred Heart has always been uh, an important part of my life. You know, I, I just love that image of, of the Lord uh, with his heart pierced for us, but on fire with love for us. Um, it just speaks to me uh, on multiple levels. And uh, as I was preparing for this program and really praying about what propedeutic program here at Notre Dame would look like, um, I had some really good prayer experiences with the Sacred Heart. Um, one in particular that I can I, I can call to mind, I was praying in the chapel one morning uh, and, and made a consecration to the Sacred Heart. And when I got back to my room that afternoon, uh, someone had sent me a picture, just a picture, no words. Uh, and it was a picture of me, vested for mass, praying before a statue of the Sacred Heart. So I really felt that connection with the Lord and Him guiding me in this process. So we've, uh, I've titled this program Men After the Heart of Christ, the propedeutic stage of formation at Notre Dame Seminary. And it's, uh, it's really what we're trying to do, is we're trying to form these men uh, for discernment of a priestly vocation after the heart of our Lord. In order to build the propedeutic stage for Notre Dame Seminary, I really wanted to uh, take it to prayer, right? First and foremost, uh, bring it to the Lord and to see what he was calling me to implement. Um, and then also, of course, to look at what the PPF was asking for and to try to um, put together a program that will work here uh, at Notre Dame Seminary that would also fulfill what the bishops and the Holy Father were asking of us. Um, and so that started with looking at, looking at this program through the lens of human formation and spiritual uh, formation fundamentally. Um, and so I tried to structure it in a way that their daily orarium 
is centered around, uh, first and foremost, their prayer schedule, right? They have a uh, morning prayer and mass together in the morning, as well as a daily holy hour that they pray together in their community uh, and a daily rosary, as well as evening prayer uh, later in the day. That became the, the overall structure. And then within that structure, trying to uh, look at what are some opportunities for development in that uh, spiritual and human uh, formation, as well as some intellectual, right? The propedeutic stage is not non-intellectual. There is an aspect of looking at uh, church teaching, the catechism, uh, scripture, but from a more basic and fundamental level, uh, not so much looking at it in terms of a uh, uh, master's level course that they might take later in their formation. And so what I put into the, the daily orarium is this time, time frame, uh, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, where each day they're kind of focused on a different, uh, a different area. Mondays is that spiritual side, looking at the spiritual tradition of the church from a more uh, basic uh, level, an introductory level. Uh, Tuesdays is looking at that human formation, you know, going through some aspects of good Catholic counseling, uh, not necessarily to be counselors one day, uh, which they will be, but in order to better understand themselves, their own emotions, their own affective maturity. Uh, and then finally, on Wednesdays is that, that day for the sacred sciences, right? To really uh, take a, a dive into uh, script, scripture from a, uh, an introductory level, as well as catechism from an introductory level. Uh, and then on Fridays, they have some time for some uh, group processing and uh, group dynamics, uh, which really allows them to kind of uh, grow in that community, which is also a fundamental aspect of the propedeutic stage is that they really begin to build a true intentional community uh, among themselves. One final, one additional aspect of the propedeutic stage that I like is uh, we have built into the, their daily orarium, their weekly schedule, uh, time for manual labor. Uh, so the guys get to work uh, with our facilities director um, in order to do projects and jobs around the house. Um, they'll also be learning at some point, like how to change a tire, how to plug a tire, how to do basic life skills that a lot of young people don't know today. Um, and so I'm excited about that. I think that's going to give them another aspect of human formation, right? Because uh, it's it's just good, good things to know, right? Uh, so obviously, we live in a world, obviously, of uh, technology overload, right? We, we have these devices in our pockets all the time. We have these smart watches on our wrists. We have, you know, laptops and televisions and technology is everywhere. And technology is not necessarily bad. But I think if we look at the studies and the research, that there can become uh, habitual use or an addictive use of technology. I think a lot of uh, young people as well as old people, I don't want to restrict it just to the young people, uh, but just people in general today uh, are coming from a background of maybe being overly attached to their devices or to social media uh, or to uh, any form of technology. The PPF actually calls for uh, help in developing healthy habits right, of technology use. And so that's in our program with Propedeuta guys, uh, where we try to do that by implementing a uh, technology fast, not for the entirety of the, uh, the Propedeuta program, but specifically for the first five weeks. So we began this fast after Labor Day, uh, and it will take them through uh, their first retreat. When they go on their first retreat, when they get back from the retreat, will be when we will uh, give them their full use of their devices back. And along the way, try to help them develop those healthy habits and have those conversations of what is it going to look like when you get your, your devices and your technology back. Um, this fast is not a, uh, a cold turkey, like give me everything. You don't, you don't have any contact with the outside world. Uh, after talking with some uh, psychologists and, and realizing that the, the studies show that connection that comes through technology is a good thing, right? So we don't want to take away that feeling of connectedness to family, to friends, to the outside world. So in order to, uh, to better support that connectedness, but also to give them uh, limited uh, use of social media and other technology, um, what we're doing for these five weeks is we're, we're asking them to relinquish their uh, laptops, their iPads, um, video game systems, uh, individual devices in that regard. Uh, but they can keep like smartwatches, they can keep their cell phones. Uh, however, their cell phones, um, I have restricted the use of certain apps uh, certain functionality. So they can't surf the web, you know, uh, till all hours of the night. They can't uh, use Instagram or, or Snapchat or, or social media outlets, but they do have access to uh, texting, to phone calls, uh, to maps, to, you know, online banking apps, things that 
are, are necessary for our, you know, they really have become part of our life and are good uh, means to connect with the outside world. So in terms of the, uh, in terms of the spiritual dimension of the propedeutic stage of formation, uh, one aspect is the, the introductory course, if you will, on the spiritual tradition of the church. But another aspect is uh, the retreats. So the, the PPF calls for uh, or recommends that there might be more than just a, a yearly retreat because the focus of this stage of formation being on the spiritual formation. Um, so we will have uh, Notre Dame three retreats throughout the course of the year. One being about halfway through the first semester as they're easing into uh, what it means to be a seminarian, uh, what it means to discern uh, a call intentionally. Um, They'll have a second retreat, which will be a little bit longer. So the first retreat might be about three days. The second retreat is going to be about five days. Um, and that will be at the end of the first semester. Uh, and that's going to be for them to go a little deeper in their relationship with the Lord and their love for God. Uh, and then the final retreat, kind of the capstone retreat of the program, is going to be at the very end of, uh, of the second semester in May, uh, which will be an eight-day silent retreat individually directed. Um, and that'll be an opportunity for them to really um, process and pray with the Lord and come to know uh, the Sacred Heart in their own lives and the love that God has for them and their own love for Him. So I'm really excited about, uh, about that aspect of the spiritual dimension in this stage. So the program of priestly formation calls for the uh, propedeutic stage to be separate uh, from the main community within a seminary. You know, ideally, in the propedeutic stage, uh, as the PPF envisions it, is it would be at the diocesan level. But not every diocese, in reality, uh, has the resources, has the priests that they can release from ministry, or has the number of candidates to have a good community. Um, in, in light of this, the PPF says it can be done in a seminary, which is what we're providing here at Notre Dame Seminary for those dioceses who wish to uh, send to us. Um, but with the caveat that the propedeutic stage has to be a separate community. So here at Notre Dame, we have a separate uh, house, the Benson House, which is at the rear of our property, uh, that'll, that has enough rooms for the propaganda guys to, to reside in. And they have a, a private chapel with the Blessed Sacrament Reserve so that they can pray privately before the Lord in the tabernacle whenever they would like. Um, additionally, we have a, a full chapel in the main house, but you know, separate from the main chapel is the St. Joseph Hall Chapel, where they can pray all of their prayers, morning prayer, mass, uh, holy hour and um, an evening prayer at night. And also in the dining facility, we're blessed to have a, a separate dining room that is large enough to house the propaganda guys. So as they come in for their meals, they're able to go sit in, uh, in their dining room and continue to build that fraternity and camaraderie over a meal. Because as we know, that's where we really uh, build those relationships is over a meal. I mean, I'm really, I'm really excited about the propaganda program. I think it is a blessing from the church in many ways. Um, it provides that space for a new seminarian who uh, really doesn't have a, a, a grip on what this means, uh, is coming to understand himself better, his relationship with the Lord. Um, it really provides that space for a seminarian to, uh, to delve deeply into that, into the mystery of God's love, and as I said earlier, his own love for himself, um, that human dimension and that spiritual dimension. Um, at the end of this, I envision a growth in the communal nature of the seminary. I think uh, sometimes we can get caught up in our own world. Uh, even as I remember when I was a seminary, we kind of get caught up in our own world, in our own space. Um, and the community side of seminary life can kind of fall by the wayside, where we, we can sometimes forget that we're part of a community, right? We're part of the body of Christ here at Notre Dame Seminary. Um, I already see it with these guys in the propedeutic stage. Uh, they are growing in a true community, right? They're growing in, you know, they're working through issues and conflicts between each other. They're learning what it means to live in a house with other, other men, um, how to be cognizant of, you know, bedtime and uh, not making too much noise and cleaning up after yourself. Um, and all of that is going to be brought into the, the main seminary when they go into the discipleship stage and then on into the configuration stage. And then we'll have a new class in the propedeutic stage that will be going through that same process and then coming in. So the community will continue to, I think, benefit from uh, these men who are receiving good intentional formation now, are growing in that fraternity and that communal life, uh, who will be able to bring that those graces and those things that they learned in the propedeutic stage into the discipleship and configuration stage as well.